This is the Wild Poor Podcast with me, Karen Wild. This time we have a special edition podcast for dogs and firework food. www.doorwest.com Helping your pet relax naturally with Skullcap and Valerian Compound. In the UK, we have bonfire night on the 5th of November. This can be a terrible time for dogs that have a fear of loud noises, particularly fireworks. In the US, I understand that we have fireworks at other times of the year, July the 4th for example, and also, New Year's Eve is a problem for both of our cultures, and I'm sure in plenty of other places too. Fireworks are often used to celebrate weddings nowadays, so it seems to be a year-round problem. It makes sense to proof your dog against the times where you can predict fireworks are going to be around. First of all, we need to look at fireworks from your dog's point of view. We need to see what it is that they are actually afraid of. We can break down how best to help them, and in this podcast I will go through various ways that you can make sure your dog is proofed against possible firework fear and certainly help to avoid the problem, as well as those of you that may already have a dog that is extremely fearful and are wondering about ways to help. We'll also look at other things you can do, practical methods and behavioural methods that can help to get your dog used to the fireworks, sound and noise smell. This does take some preparation and I have been tweeting and putting on my Facebook about the site that I set up with the help of some other behaviourists, Muriel Brasser and some other writers, Debbie Jacobs, who also specialises in dogs that have particular fears. With the help of Leslie Tither, we put together a downloadable handout that you can all pick up on www.dogsandfireworks.com. I'm going to be going through the various tips and hints that we cover in there as well. Also, who to contact if you really find that this is a major problem. It's not worth letting your dog suffer through this season because this may become a recurrent problem and can generalise to other things. So first of all, let's look at fireworks from your dog's point of view. If you put yourself in your dog's position, everything at night normally sounds, looks and smells quite familiar. Seasons do change quite gradually. Then all of a sudden, an acrid aroma fills the air. Loud bangs surround you and there are flashes of light, all for apparently no reason at all if you're a dog. A dog can't tell where the noises are coming from, they must seem to be all around. And whatever happens, no matter what the poor dog tries, the noises don't stop. They can't even get away from it because they might be in someone's house or they might be on the end of a lead. So if you were that animal, what would you do? What we need to look at then is how to give the dog a way to first of all not see these things as a threat. It's easier if the dog isn't frightened by them but that's pretty difficult because they have an innate fear of loud noises as do babies and I suppose as do we. Even today we had some jets flying over my house and I wasn't frightened of them but I did go out to see what the noise was all about. The suggestions that I'm going to come up with I want you to put together as a plan. It really, really helps if you can make it planned out rather than an emotional response to something. Don't wait until your dog starts to react. Plan ahead. If for whatever reason you haven't got the time, maybe the fireworks have started early in your area then here are some tips later on on emergency first aid so if you have no time to prepare. And finally long-term solutions to help your pet become completely stable for any future occasions. And I should point out we're not just talking about dogs here, any pet might wonder what on earth is going on uh, at firework season. Do make sure though before you attempt any kind of behaviour modification, particularly if your dog is really suffering, that you do make absolutely sure that your dog is not suffering from any medical conditions. 
A checkup with your vet is a sensible precaution and it is part of your commitment to your dog's long-term welfare. Don't be surprised if a behaviourist asks you to get this check done because although you may think that there is absolutely nothing wrong with your dog, only a vet can really identify that. So if you've still got time, this is all about how to plan ahead. When we vaccinate our dogs, you know, we, we inoculate them against p possible diseases and we socialise and train them as well to turn them into good citizens. So preparing your dog for fireworks night and indeed any sudden loud noises is absolutely crucial to their long term welfare. And it's a normal part of the process of dog ownership. If we turn chaos into calm, that means that our aim is to make fireworks noise as normal to your dog as possible. It does sound odd, but we do want your dog to feel like fireworks are just another part of their everyday environment and will come and go without any danger or threat. Remember that the fireworks probably aren't ever going to hurt your dog physically, but that's not what the dog thinks. Ideally, what we'd like them to do is to associate any fireworks noise with fun and games, with attention and treats from you. We would really like fireworks to become a familiar and predictable event for your pets, but a predictable one that signifies happiness and relaxation. So how do we acclimatise our dogs? On the www.dogsandfireworks.com website, we actually have some free downloads for you. There's a free video, which you can play uh, on full screen mode on your computer if you like. It's a YouTube video, so if you want to take a copy of it and use it uh, privately, that's absolutely fine. If you need to play it through another medium, for example. But you can download the video or you can play it as it stands and it shows firework displays, lights and loud bangs and flashes. And my thanks to Karen G for sending us that because it really has been a help to a lot of people. So far we've had an awful lot of views on that video. So don't just put the video on at full volume on your computer and wait for your dog to react. That's probably the wrong way to go about it. Instead, if your dog is around and they're doing something fun, you could put the video on your computer screen and play it at minimal volume. You need to see if the dog is actually going to react at all. But the reaction needs to be quite a minor reaction if you're looking for it. An ear twitch, maybe the dog just looking at the screen. What we don't want to do is overreact uh, or encourage the dog to overreact. And we certainly don't want the dog to pay lots and lots of attention to the noise. We want it to become a background. So make sure the dog is doing something interesting and fun elsewhere, near, nearby, and just have the volume at a level that just gets the slightest little bit of interest, nothing more. As time progresses, and the downloadable handout does give you more details about this, you can increase the volume, dim the lights, and make the fireworks display a little bit more realistic. If you're downloading the MP3 player, this is a sound recording of a fireworks display, which you can put onto an iPod um, or anything else you choose. Um, you can actually put it onto a CD as well, and you can play it on a loop. Again, set the volume to its lowest setting. Play the, play the file as a background noise to your everyday activities and begin with the volume as low as possible. Incidentally, if you're playing the video, you can turn your screen brightness down as well. If you gradually increase this until there is the barest flick of attention, this is your baseline. Make a note of it. Again, over a period of days, you can increase the volume or screen brightness, but only do this when there is no longer any reaction from your dog. Any increase should be minimal so that your dog is really not aware of what's happening. And remember, no reaction is a good thing, not a bad thing. Begin to associate feeding time or use delicious food that your dog doesn't normally get for times where the sound or video is quietly playing. It is unlikely that a dog that is enjoying themselves with food or games will additionally experience fear. Promote the enjoyment factor in relation to the sounds or video playing quietly and gradually as you increase the intensity they will cease to have a worrying effect. You may wish to do some additional training with your dog and certainly need to get the dog to associate that firework noise equals fun. Now, if your dog is sensitive to other sounds, I do suggest you seek professional help from an accredited behaviourist. But why not record your own sounds and compile them onto a CD for use in a similar way? 
Again, they should just become part of the background noise. So do take care with this procedure and remember that we're only looking at a small part of the overall stimulus. So even if you think that you are getting your dog proof to fireworks, it's probably not in totality going to help. You need to add in other things as well. The next thing you can do in preparation is to build a beautiful bolt hole. When you're feeling a bit unhappy, often it can be a relief to hide under the duvet. Your pet can feel great comfort from retiring to a familiar den where they have learned that nice things will happen and no harm will come to them. Dogs will quite often escape to places where they feel more safe, under the stairs, under the settee. Uh, in my dog's case, it went underneath the kitchen unit and squeezed itself underneath there. Um, so decide on an area that's easier for you to manage. A place where your pet will feel happiest. It may be at your feet, near the radiator, next to the television, or somewhere that your pet has previously chosen and you decide you can convert it into something a bit more permanent. Obviously, it makes sense to avoid areas next to outside walls or next to windows. Provide your pet with a crate, a large sturdy cardboard box, a pet travel container or something similar and make sure there's no sharp edges or anything that might, might cause suffocation should your pet get stuck. It obviously should be big enough that the dog can stand up in and turn around in. But your aim is not to lock your pet inside so you don't really need to worry about a door that can be closed. Next, pad the container out with comfortable and safe bedding. Clean old blankets can easily be obtained from FreeCycle or your local charity shop. Old curtains also work really, really well on this. You can also use blankets over the crate or old curtains again to further insulate against flashes of light and noise and add a la an extra layer of blankets underneath the crate to protect from vibrations through the floor. Now the next step is to teach your pet that the den is a safe and enjoyable place to be. It's not a punishment. Feed them in there, leave water readily available nearby and attach favourite chews inside if you'd like. Your pet needs to learn that their den is the best place to go if they were feeling at all stressed, or even if they aren't. You might want to place an old item of your clothing in there as a further familiar signal. Make it really cosy. If your pet does choose their own bolt hole and it doesn't really suit you, don't try and coax them out. Make the best of their choice if you can by insulating it as described above. Don't force them out. Likewise, don't force them in. Make it an attractive place to be, using food, nice smells, warmth and attention from you when they enter. Your dog might want to stay next to you as well, and that's okay too. It won't hurt them if you give them a cuddle or make a little bit of a fuss of them. Remember that only if you sound worried and anxious, your pet is going to be more anxious. If you sound jolly and happy, and as if nothing's happened, then that's far more likely to settle them down. You should also look at how to soundproof your house if you can, or certainly the rooms that your pet is going to be in. So if your dog normally spends their time in the lounge, but you know that that's looking over a park or neighbour's house that are likely to have a big firework display every year, then it might be worth gradually trying to transfer them somewhere else. Certainly where they sleep might be a good place to proof and I do know that a lot of pets that I visit sleep in the kitchen or utility room where there aren't always curtains. Now this can be a problem if it's things if the curtain if the kitchen overlooks people's back gardens because they may be looking up at the firework display themselves and so it might be worth putting something across the windows. Draw the curtains early and thicker curtains are best. They're not a bad investment actually, because this can also insulate up against heat loss. Thicker curtains will deaden sound and prevent flashes of light disturbing your pets. Secure all doors and windows. Of course, we don't want your dog or your cat to escape in fear. Hanging a blanket at a window or around any gaps in doors can block out extra noise very effectively. So again, off down to the charity shop and get yourself some extra bits and pieces. It might be a good idea as well to lay out newspaper or a puppy pad or two to allow your dog to toilet indoors. If they're likely to empty themselves through fear, you can at least try and direct this behaviour to a place that is easy for you to clear up and less distressing for your pet perhaps. It might also be that you don't really want to take your pet outside to toilet on those particular nights, so do give them somewhere where they can go. 
Door West say relax with the firework product pack from Door West Herbs. Doorwest.com. Fireworks phobia, no fear. It's important that you don't leave your dog thoroughly dependent on you as well, especially if you are planning to go out over the fireworks season. I think most of us might want to attend a display at some point, so you do need to prepare your pet for being left alone at this time. First of all, obviously, you need to accustom your pet to the sounds and to the den, as I've just described. It might be worth asking a neighbour or friend or family member to pet sit that evening whilst you're away. Make sure your pet is familiar with them being in the house, of course, because they'll already be stressed from the fireworks and the last thing they need is a stranger. But do ensure that you've proofed them against this by getting whoever it is to have them and look after them in advance. Once you have your pet safe den in place and you've been playing the fireworks sound file for some time, you can practice leaving the house and then coming straight back in. Gradually build up the time spent away. If you know your dog has a separation issue, again I do advise that you get specialist help with this and don't leave it to compound the problem with fireworks noise as well. Remember to always act really unconcerned when you go and when you come back. And if your pet begins to show signs of stress when you go through your normal departure routine, you should aim to vary this. You don't always have to go out of the front door, you can go out of the side door or the back door. They may not have linked this exit with the fact that they're actually going to be left, so it might be a handy tip for you. But do get your pet used to the fact that you may not always be with them when it's dark and noises may be going on outside if you're planning to go out. If you do know that your dog really can't cope though, it might be safer or more humane for you to stay in with them or take them to a place where they're not likely to suffer any noise. A point of safety here as well. Make sure that your pet is microchipped and is wearing a collar and ID tag, particularly at this time of year. Your pet should wear a visible ID tag anyway. By law, they have to be inscribed with your name and address. But a microchip is well worth doing. Not only does it help against theft, but it also helps anyone else picking up your cat or your dog if their collar has been lost. Usually, your pet is going to be found in your neighbourhood, so that's why you also need an ID tag. It's just common sense, but obviously you would probably want to put on your phone number and your mobile phone number as well. You know, the point is, your average neighbour doesn't have microchip scanning equipment, do they? So you would have to be waiting until the dog warden or someone else picked up your pet. There are many, many remedies on the market and different medications that you can give and your vet will be able to advise you on suitable medications if you have a severe problem. I do advise that you do this in conjunction with behavioural help, however, because this can increase the efficacy of the product quite considerably. Our sponsor, Dorwest Herbs, do a product called Skullcap and Valerian and I do use that on my own dogs. You could consider using the DAP or Adaptil range for dogs, which is a pheromone product. It's called Feliway for cats, and this has been scientifically shown to have a calming effect. But again, with any products like this, you need to make sure that you are putting into place the other behavioural things that I've mentioned, because if you fail to do that, your dog may still be stressed. They might just be a little bit less stressed than they would otherwise have been. So don't just leave it all to the medication or the nutraceutical or whatever additional herbal remedy you're giving them. They can be highly effective, um, but you know, do check and do make sure that you're doing all the other things as well. If it's going to alleviate some anxiety, then I would probably do it, um, unless your vet advises otherwise. And of course, always check with your vet before you give your dog anything. With any remedy, you must always remember that fear avoidance is a strongly developed survival instinct that your pet is demonstrating. They cannot understand what's going on and they are desperate to get away from it. Some other essential tips. Obviously, it makes sense to avoid walking your dog after dusk during fireworks season. We are always saying how early the fireworks go off around here. And I guess when they've got people have got younger children, they want to get the displays over and done with before they go to bed. So it's not always the midnight call of the uh, New Year's fireworks. Sometimes people can't wait. Um, it is the case that behaviour consultants report um, that phobias uh, in dogs and cats often develop from a single event on or around November the 5th and I'm assuming in the US it will be around the other dates that I've mentioned. 
So if you're anxious around these times that your dog won't get enough exercise, you could consider giving your dog a longer walk in the middle of the day. And if you're at work, why not get a dog walker to do this for you just for the temporary season? But do get your pet into the routine in plenty of time. So if you're thinking about doing this now, I'm recording this in October, then it's time to get cracking. You could also consider feeding your dog earlier in the day so that if they do become stressed, their eating will not be affected. And of course, if your dog suffers from diarrhoea as a result of the stress, you could feed them in the morning and give them plenty of opportunity to empty themselves before dark. It doesn't mean to say that we want to allow diarrhoea. It just might mean that if it catches you unawares, it might make things a little bit easier. So... It's near a bonfire night, it's near a New Year's Eve, it's near a 4th of July, what are you going to do? First aid emergencies. The first tip, which is from Debbie um, from Fearful Dogs, is an excellent one. Jollying. Don't act worried. Sound and act happy. Remember that voice that you use for the times your dog does their party trick for the family or comes back when you call them straight away? Use it. Get your dog to play their favourite game with a toy or give them their treat ball or the nicest chew you can find. And I mean delicious, tasty and smelly. The smellier the better. If you have several dogs in your household, playing with the less affected dogs and getting them jollied up, is, it might actually help change the atmosphere for all of them. Um, particularly if you've just got one or two stressed dogs. Of course, if you behave in a stressed way, that will bring all the dogs down. So try and be happy and jolly. Above all, do not tell your pet off for their behaviour, no matter what they do. They're experiencing a very normal fear reaction, even if it's something that you don't want. But getting upset yourself will just make things a lot, lot worse. If you train your dog around times of stress, I don't mean train them while they're stressed. I mean train them and then get them to repeat the same behaviours at times that might be mildly stressful at first. Then what you're actually teaching your dog is that the environment around them and you are behaving in a predictable way. And predictability equals safety. It's quite a good trick and I certainly used to use it when I took my dogs to competition. I would get them to do something really, really easy and familiar, like a little party trick, so that they would start to relax and look at me and communicate and think about what I was telling them to do. And it would settle them down. It would also settle me down because I could see my dog responding in a relaxed way just before we were about to go into the arena and do some agility or some obedience. If you normally stroke your dog a few times, then tell it to lie on its bed. Avoid lots and lots of extra patting and stroking because they might wonder why you're acting differently. But of course, if they want to snuggle up to you, then that's fine. You could actually turn on the TV and the radio. A lot of people will leave the radio on to drown noise out, but then they might never put the radio on during the day. So the problem is the dog starts to associate the radio with something unpleasant about to happen. So if you normally have the television on, then put the television on. And my tip is to put the television on um, on a different channel in a separate room or put the radio on on a different channel in a separate room so that there's a cross of sound so that it tends to not be quite so predictable and have so many quiet points in it. Now, to be more eco-friendly on this, you could use a couple of wind-up radios. They do run out, but at least it saves a bit of electricity. You might even wish to warn your neighbours that your television might be a bit louder than usual for this purpose and do respect local laws with regard to neighbourhood noise. You know, there are ways to uh, upset your neighbours and that's certainly one of them. Um, it might be that you want to move your television away from the neighbour's wall or something like that. So try and be practical. Lastly, long-term solutions, a programme for life. So we've got our emergency bits and pieces and we've talked about ways to prepare. But a long-term solution is what we're really after, particularly if your dog is badly affected. So go back to the start of this podcast and begin preparing for the future. It might be that you've just been caught out on bonfire night and you don't know what to do. So my advice is go to the website and get the download and start your plan. Teach yourself to recognise the signs of early, early stress in your dogs. So dogs will often pace around, they will lick their lips and yawn and pant and roll their eyes and do little things that you might wonder if they're bored or you know tired or something like that. And usually it's that the dog is stressed. You can quite often see if they sweat from their pads as well, which is quite visible on a hard floor. Um, 
If this happens, spot the early signs and obviously take action. Get the dog out of there or do something to distract them as I've just described. Some dogs are more sensitive to sound than others. This may be a breed thing. Um, it might just be that they've had a nasty experience in the past. It might be that their hearing is more sensitive. Um, it might be a genetic predisposition, as I say. So just recognise that as a possible. And just because one dog is frightened of fireworks doesn't mean that they're all going to be. It might also be that some dogs cope better with uh, than others with stressful events. And this is quite evident in multi-dog households. You know, one dog will seem to be fine and another is hiding away. Dogs will learn from each other. And I can tell you this from personal experience. One of my dogs used to be absolutely fine with bonfire night until I got my second dog who was terrified. And then I had both dogs terrified. This was a long time ago. And I have to say, I didn't have all the resources that are available now. We did manage and we made life nicer for them. But it was very interesting to see how one dog's behaviour could change so rapidly, even after I'd had him for five or six years. Do target as well. Make sure that you've spotted the times where fireworks are likely to be let off, when and where. So if you have a big display in your village like we do, those are the times where I take my dogs out of the village. It's just easier for them. You can also get lower noise fireworks and some of the fireworks that seem to be really popular are the really loud ones. But you can get fireworks that actually don't bang as loud and it also seems to be the whistling ones that drive my dogs crazy. So do make friends and neighbours available, uh, aware that this choice is available because it might be that they actually don't want to upset anyone either. Obviously we can't boss people around but it's you know sometimes nice if you have a, a neighbour that hasn't otherwise thought about it. If you're obviously planning a fireworks display, please do make sure that you warn your neighbours and people in the vicinity. And I believe there are some uh, proposals to go for putting um, advice on the actual fireworks for people who own pets. And it goes without saying to keep your cat in. If you find any firework litter when you're on your walks the next day, um, do pick it up and dispose of it because it can be harmful to animals if it's eaten. And obviously let it cool down first. It might be that your pet is sensitive to the smell of fireworks. So a tip um, that I read from David Ryan, who is the uh, head of the APBC, um, is to actually get the fireworks that are left over, pop them in an, air, an airtight box, um, a solid lidded box that the dog can't get into, and put air holes in it so that the smell can get out but the pet can't get in. And you can tape it really securely shut. And then you can gradually introduce this rather than shove it under the dog's nose again and wait for them to turn around and up, get upset. You can actually put it near or in a room at the other end of the room and see if they investigate it and look at their general reaction before you gradually start to introduce it more closely. You may end up wanting to put it right near their food bowl or something like that so that they associate dinner time with this interesting smell because that is something we can all smell on bonfire night. So you can be sure that a dog can smell it too. If your pet has gone missing, and heaven forbid this happens, but do make sure that your, ta uh, your microchip details are up to date and search your local area because it's likely that your dog will be hiding somewhere nearby or your cat. You might wish to contact your local police station and the dog warden at the local council. It's also advisable to contact the local vets in the area in case your dog has been handed in and there are plenty of brilliant organisations to help with finding lost pets. Again, not to make you too paranoid, but it might be worth making sure you've got a good set of photographs of your pet before bonfire night or any other time like this, because then at least you've got something to show people rather than having to hunt round for something later on and end up with a picture of them as a puppy or kitten. Obviously, if you find your pet and they're injured, ring your local veterinary surgery, because even if they're not open, say it's late at night, there will be a 24 hour contact emergency number. Finally, if your, vet, if your pet appears to be struggling to recover from the fireworks and you think they've been badly affected or you're worried about this coming season, please do see your vet for referral to an accredited, qualified and experienced behaviour specialist. Now, I do recommend that you see somebody from the APBC, which is the Association of Pet Behaviour Counsellors, or the UKRCB, which is the UK Registry of Canine Behaviourists. These people have been properly um, checked and accredited and they should know what they're talking about. They have a very strict code of practice and, um, you know, they are 
um, the ones that the vet should be sending you to. Of course, you do need to see your vet first because it makes sense, as I said at the very beginning, to make sure that your dog or your cat has no actual medical problems because these can affect their behaviour as well. A good professional will give you plenty of advice for planning ahead and will tailor it to your specific needs. The advice on this podcast is generic, you know, it's general advice and I can't possibly tailor it to everyone out there. So please do consult with somebody who will come out and do a proper home visit. It shouldn't cost you a great deal and no more than, you know, well, I can't really discuss prices, but it shouldn't really cost you a great deal and you should be getting proper qualified help for that. Finally, do remember, it's not all doom and gloom and there are things that you can give to your pet to help. Continued exposure to stress for them can lead to severe long-term psychological damage, so it might be worth continuing your anti-stress remedies for some time afterwards as well, to make sure that everything's put back in place ready for the next time. So that's about it for this week's episode of the Wild Poor Dog Podcast. You can contact Karen on Twitter at twitter.com slash wildpaw. Or why not send her an email on podcast at intellidogs.com. If you're looking for more in-depth training advice, why not build your own dog training manual tailored to your needs? This special edition podcast was sponsored by Dorwest Herbs. Dorwest.com. The natural way to calm your cat and dog. 